In this video, we make our own hair material and blender. This is the second of a three-part tutorial series which covers the process of generating, shading, and animating realistic hair, all in an entirely procedural workflow. If you haven't watched the first part of this series, I highly recommend you do so before going into this one. But if you have already watched the previous video, you know that we ended things in the Geometry Nodes workspace where we procedurally generated thousands of strands of hair. However, at no point did we tell Blender what material to use for the strands, which is why, in Render, the hair shows up chalk white. So before we step over to the shading workspace, let's create a new material. Now bring up the Add menu and use the search field to find a node called Set Material. Add this node to the setup. And select the material we just created. With this in place, let's switch over to the Shading workspace where we can set up the shader nodes for the hair. First things first, delete this principled BSDF node and in its place, bring in a principled hair node. This node has lots of parameters, many of which only slightly affect the appearance of the hair strands. So let's start simple. Even though the principled hair node puts us on the right track, the monotonous quality of this hair shader is far from a natural look. We need some variety. Now if we were using Blender's built-in hair system, we could easily bring in a curve info node and use that to add some color variation to the hair strands. Specifically, using the intercept value, we could add a gradient to the hair, or with the random value, we could randomize the color of the hair strands. But we didn't use the built-in hair system. We made our own hair generator. And now it seems like we're going to miss out on some useful features. Unless we can create the same variables ourselves. Going back to Blender's geometry nodes, we do have the option to create variables of our own and pass them over to shader nodes. In Blender Lingo, these variables are called attributes and the node that allows us to create them is called store named attribute. Once we add this to our setup, we can, for example, take the factor output of a spline parameter node and store it as its own attribute. Now, if you remember from the previous video, I'm very fond of the spline parameter node, specifically because its factor output is a value that starts from zero at the base of a hair strand and increases to one towards the tip. We'll make good use of this property later in the shader nodes, but to match the features of Blender's built-in hair system, we would also like to have an attribute that contains a random number for each individual strand. So. Before we step away from geometry nodes, let me point out that when it comes to named attributes, aside from selecting the correct options, it's also important to give them a unique name. Done and done. And now it's time to head back to the shading workspace. For our hair material, first order of business is to randomly variate the color of the strands which is especially helpful when it comes to depicting the age of a character. With this objective in mind, bring up the Add menu and use the Search field to drop in an Attribute node. This node lets us retrieve any attribute we previously stored in Geometry nodes, and right now we are keen to use the attribute that contains random values. Taking the factor output, we can use a Color Ramp node as a palette where colors are selected at random for each individual strand. 
This concludes the first step to a natural look. The next step is to create a color gradient between the base and the tip of each hair strand. This requires the second attribute from our geometry node setup. So let's bring in another attribute node. Along with a map range node, a math node with its operation set to power, and a mix color node. Here, the factor output of the attribute node, which ranges between 0 and 1 from the base to the tip of each strand, is passed through the map range node, where we can set the start and end of the color gradient. The output of the map range node is then passed over to the power node, which converts the linear gradient into a nonlinear one to then be used as the factor input on the mixed color node. The result of this are hair strands that gradually change color along their length which looks nice at first glance, but then immediately feels unnatural, mainly because every single hair strand starts and ends the gradation at the same location, making things look too uniform, intentional, and consequently unnatural. What we need is some randomization. And lucky for us, we already have an attribute that contains a random number for each strand. So Q the video editing magic. A few notes later, we have introduced enough randomness to make the hair look much more realistic. With these nodes giving us access to the most important parameters, we have all the means to customize the hair material. Specifically note, the trick to take three tints to tweak the tone of the hair. We can even create some interesting visual effects like this aging animation by adding keyframes to the parameters. But we're not quite done yet. In the third and final part of this tutorial series, I will show you how to make the hair wave under a seamless looping animation. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.